Okay. Well, uh, I think we can start our first presentation. And according to our agenda, I would like to invite authors of the following article, Explanation in Multi-Stakeholder Recommendation for Enterprise Decision Support Systems. As I understood uh, the result, right? Claudio, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can we uh, start and uh, see your presentation? Sure. Mm hmm. I see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Claudio Pomo, a second year PhD student from Politecnico di Bari. And today I'm glad to present you our work, Explanation in Multi-Stakeholder Recommendation for Enterprise Decision Support System. I would like to thank the other co-authors from Politecnico di Bari, Università della Tuffa, and Ernest de Young. I start by presenting the outline of this presentation. Firstly, I will introduce and motivate our work. Then I will present our approach to addressing counterfactual explanation in multi-stakeholder recommender system. In the end, I will outline the conclusion and draw some future work. In this introduction, I will draw some appealing aspect of recommender system and reason why they have a crucial impact on the business context. Recently, recommender system have witnessed great prosperity in both academia and industry. They have been widely studied and applied in various domains, such as e-commerce, multimedia broadcasting, and point of interest. Nowadays, we have an impressive number of recommendation algorithms due to the collective effort of the recommender system community. This system generates recommendations by analyzing previous purchases, interests, and web page view by user. It's all about the smart processing of a big data that helps to make the most accurate customer profile as possible. This is why data science play a primary role in building recommender system. The whole process passes through three basic steps before a user gets a supplementary item he or she uh, may consider to buy or to view. These steps are information collection, uh, processing collected information at, in the end, suggesting recommendation. In this slide, you can see how the um, most important recommender system techniques works on an e-commerce scenario. In a collaborative filtering side, um, recommender system suggests new item to a customer based on a uh, purchase similarity. On the other hand, content-based approach recommender system highlight items to a customer based on our preference building on the past experience on the platform. Nowadays, with the emerging of, uh, of the deep learning uh, um, technique, we have also other kind of approach to uh, address the problem of recommendation, like context aware, cross domain, and uh, so on. Recently, uh, this system aims also to provide a better user experience. There is no doubt that if a recommender system address this last aspect, they will, uh, they will um, positive impact on platform business. In a commerce scenario, better user experience means traffic growth and more traffic means higher click ratio, click rate, and resulting in higher sales. Commander system average order value by off and we're speaking about the uh, recommender system explanation. Today, users have became demanding due to, due to the spread of recommender systems as a tool. Okay. 
officer. Explain a recommendation provide a, a clear tentative to engage the user, gain her trust, and give her the best user experience. Explain your recommendation, attempt to develop uh, models that generate not only high quality recommendation, but also intuitive explanation. Explain your recommendation, try to address the problem, of, the problem of why. By providing an explanation, the user or a system designer, uh, it helps humans to understand why certain items are recommended by an algorithm. The explanation, may either be post hoc or directly um, came from an explainable model. If an explainable model provides explanation and recommendation, it is a transparent model because the user can scrutinize the model and understand why the system suggests a specific item. On the other hand, if we have a post hoc approach, we have to build a separate module that after the um, recommendation stage, take the recommendation list and provide an explanation to the user in a separate way. But the real question is, what is a good explanation? And this is a crucial issue since, since this, this research um, involves uh, different domains, not only um, the algorithmic aspect, but also the cognitive science and the philosophical one. In addition, aspect of uh, um, explainable artificial intelligence have recently captured the attention of a cross-sectional scientific community. Aspects such as exposure bias, fairness, and explanation as a key tool when make critical decisions are increasing central to not only scientific, but also to regulatory um, aspect. In this slide, we can see um, how different actors who receive the explanation and the reason why they receive this explanation. We have also AI system builder because explanation could be a useful um, tool to debug the system because the AI uh, system builder and the system designer uh, want to understand why the performance system are uh, poor. But we have also the regulatory, regulatory bodies like uh, European community that um, want to understand if the black box model that provides some critical decision uh, do not discriminate any kind of gender, for instance. In his work, Explanation Artificial Intelligence Insights from the Social Science, uh, Miller argues that explanations are contrasted, and this evidence came uh, coming from a review of relevant article on the um, philosophy, cognitive science, and social science uh, regarding of the explanation. During the um, last century, uh, some authors uh, like Lewis, Malle, and uh, Alpern and Perl have uh, debated a lot on the question of what is an explanation and which kind of outcome match uh, user cognitive approach. Through a, system a systematic literary review, Miller points out some significant evidence from social science and assert that a powerful explanation is an answer to a why question. This kind of question uh, are the most challenging because they require counterfactual reasoning to undo an event and simulate other events that are not factual. And this also requires an associative and interventionist reasoning. Given a why question, an explanation consists of, of a pair of two parts, the explanation, which is the answer to the question, and the explanandum, which is the presupposition. The common ground between cognitive science and explanation AI for a counterfactual approach and the philosophical perspective also is the causality theory by PR. And with this uh, um, approach, the interventionist approach, we can define two kinds of events, exogenous and endogenous. Exogenous events are events that determine the external factor and define the context. Endogenous events are uh, events um, that uh, an agent can change to influence the results. And in, in this way, this is expected as a uh, the causes of the results itself. An important uh, um, evidence is uh, that the causality drive the counterfactual explanation. This is a typical template for a counterfactual. If you choose cause two instead of cause one, I would predict you event two instead of event one. In this case, cause two and cause one are endogenous causes controlled by the user. And this is Mm, this is a link between the causality uh, approach, the causality theory, and the counterfactual explanation, the explanation that we exploit in the next. But we also consider the multi-stakeholder scenario. 
in real um, uh, e-commerce domain, let's say, we don't have only the user that uh, query the system and uh, try to, uh, to buy something, but we have, we have also the provider of the product that try to sell as uh, much item as possible. And we have also the system's objectives that try to mitigate the uh, utility of the consumer and the utility of the provider. In this sense, a recommendation stakeholder is any group or individual that can affect or is affected by the delivery or recommendation to the user. Now, we uh, try to um, address our problem of explanation in multi-stakeholder recommendation. Firstly, uh, it's um, interesting to introduce the new recommendation list. The recommendation list provided by a multi-stakeholder recommender system denoted with R star C is a sort of re-ranked of ideal recommendation list that uh, a user um, can get if uh, the um, provider utility is not taken account. And we want that this R star C is similar as possible to this ideal uh, recommendation list. The, uh, the core point is that we consider uh, that there are endogenous and exogenous events based only on the stakeholder perspective. Each stakeholder sees a reaction as endogenous event, while events corresponding to the other stakeholder are seen as exogenous events. The only choice that stakeholder can make is about their profile. A consumer may change a list of preferred items, while a provider may change its strategy to sell more and more items. Another important aspect that with this kind of um, approach to address the explanation problem, uh, each explanation does not reveal to a stakeholder the other stakeholders' preferences because um, they see the other events as uh, exogenous causes. In this slide, you can see an example of a counterfactual explanation for a consumer. I recommend you an Apple phone because based on your profile, you prefer Samsung Galaxy S1 the most. In this case, we can see that this is the, um, the classical explanation, but we have the second part. If, you more, if your most preferred item were Samsung Galaxy S10, we'll suggest you Google Pixel 5 instead. In this case, you put the, uh, the, the consumer in the control of the system because you, uh, you, you say to, to this consumer, look, if you in the past provide a different choice, if you change your um, past, uh, um, past purchases, now you are, uh, I, um, I suggest you a different, a different item. And in this case, the preference of the provider are not disclosed. The same is for the provider, because also for the provider, I can say, I recommend to early adapter number one, the Google Pixel 5, because Google Pixel 5 is the first on your priority list, because a provider can give to the system a sort of priority list that uh, prioritizes the selling of a specific item. The second part of the explanation is, as you choose a different marketing strategy, the second cause, uh, with the most prominent item is uh, Samsung Galaxy S10, I would put this item in a doctor recommendation. Also, in this case, the provider um, understand that he, uh, in a such way, um, drive the, the recommendation process because only the uh, action that uh, it takes change the final recommendation list. And also, in this case, the um, consumer preferences as no, are not disclosed. To conclude, we have seen how recommender system play a crucial role in the business context and uh, why multi-stakeholder recommender system are the best choice to meet different constraints in a real um, world business scenario. We have explained also about explanation uh, that are fundamental for each stakeholder experience on the platform and uh, why counterfactual explanation is a, a good choice in this direction because it's based on the choice of each stakeholder without revealing the other's reserved information. For the future, we carry out a controlled experiment, experiment to evaluate the real impact of this type of explanation in a real scenario. We have also um, think about to build a content-based recommendation in the multi-stakeholder recommender system scenario where stakeholder preferences 
could be expressed as a preferred feature values and not uh, only with an implicit uh, association between uh, consumer and item or provider and item. And in this direction, we want to apply different optimization functions to address the recommendation list re-ranking problem following either game theory optimization or Pareto frontier derivation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia. And now time for the questions, please. Dear attendees of the mobile workshop, feel free to ask any questions, comments, remarks to this presentation. Well, uh, let me ask you a question, Claudio. Uh, in the context of mobile workshop, in terms of agility, I would like to know, uh, do you plan to create a roadmap for more complex and complex explanation? So your approach will deliver uh, simple explanations, at the first moment, then more uh, complex explanation on the second stage of the development and research. And finally, uh, your uh, system will deliver full-fledged explanations uh, to the customers. Yes. In the, Do you in the context of a roadmap? Uh, we, we don't have a proper roadmap, but we want to investigate uh, the real impact uh, um, in, the, in the sense that uh, with the explanation you can uh, uh, provide, uh, as I just mentioned before, an explanation to the customer uh, to engage the customer, but we have also to provide an explanation to the provider and to the system. The explanation um, is useful to the provider and to the system because in this way you can debug if the, um, the recommendation process um, matching the real user preferences and in this way, um, it um, provides a sort of agility aspect because if the system owner uh, understands that something is not uh, um, proper work on your recommender system, uh, he um, can uh, um, change the, uh, the recommendation process, let's say the, the, um, the core of the recommendation system in order to match better the, um, the utility of the, the customer, but also to the provider because in this sense, um, the system objectives is a sort of mitigation between these two utility utility function and strategies. In this sense, we uh, we want to investigate the agility, let's say, of this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, maybe um, I will ask a second question. Uh, it is related to the first one. Uh, because I saw Professor Danini among co-authors, so I assume uh, you know something about formal ontologies and taxonomies. So, my question is, uh, do you plan create a kind of event taxonomy to classify different events uh, to different categories uh, in your system? It's a good question, and uh, sure, this is a, a very interesting um, direction that can we uh, will to investigate because with this kind of approach, we can embed this ontology, let's say this taxonomy, in our uh, exponential model to provide a sort of uh, semantic counterfactual explanation, let's say, based on the event classification. It's a very interesting uh, direction. And it will be done uh, in future, right? Uh, yes, as yes, far as I yes. You didn't have such a uh, taxonomy or classification. Okay, I wish you yes. good luck in that important task. Well, uh, other questions, please. From our uh, attendees. If you have a question, just put it in the Q&A and then um, I can allow you to talk. Uh, maybe I will ask a third question. Uh, 
do you see uh, any differences uh, in application of your approach to different uh, application domains? Or your approach is uh, generic and can be, uh, can be uh, naturally be applied to different domains, like retail or some other kind of uh, economy? Can you hear me? Okay. Edward, can you hear me? Claudia? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, I if I get uh, the question. Didn't, didn't you hear my question? Like, yes, yes, if I get correctly yeah, your I, question. I hear you now, yes. Yes, if I get correctly your, uh, your question. Um, this approach is for the uh, multi-stakeholder okay. scenario for recommendation, uh, apart from the domain. Uh, every kind of uh, multi-stakeholder uh, mm -hmm. context. Uh, we uh, think about uh, music domain like uh, Spotify, for instance, or uh, um, some uh, multimedia broadcasting like uh, recently Amazon that uh, uh, with the Prime Video provide also the, um, not only the um, properly uh, uh, video production, but also the, um, the film and the movie series provided by other provider. And uh, uh, in this context of uh, uh, multi-stakeholder, our, our counterfactual approach for explanation is um, match a double, uh, um, a double key point, provide a, a, an engagement of the explanation from the user and from the provider, and put the provider and the consumer in the center of the explanation and uh, make um, they more comfortable about this process. And also, we uh, also have a sort of privacy preserving in, indeed, we don't, do not reveal uh, to the, the consumer or to the provider the other stakeholder utilities and uh, priority or characteristics. This is the uh, key point. So we can apply this kind of approach in all the multi-stakeholder uh, domain, let's say. Very interesting. Okay, thank you very much for such an interesting thank discussion. Uh, any other questions from our attendees or maybe from other panelists? No? Okay, thank you very much for presentation. Uh, I invite you to join us to our final session at the end of this day to share your ideas about agility. Maybe we will define some jointly interesting projects and uh, we will have a um, final discussion about uh, innovational and uh, business agility. Thank you. Thank now, you. Thank you. I would like to invite another speaker. Uh, this is the person who will tell us uh, about organizational structure uh, range engineering who will be a presenter this is me let me share my screen i so, have Nadezhda Polashuk yeah. to present our can you see my screen is it okay yes i hope for any other people <laughs> yeah how much fun. So hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about topic organizational structure re-engineering based on the transactional approach and we will learn case of construction business. So my name is Blaschuk Nadezhda. During this presentation we will learn a little bit about construction and network structures and how we can use network structures in construction business and also how it can affect on transactional costs. So firstly, I would like to say that construction is a very important sector for economic as in Russia, as in whole world. 
So we have learned uh, different statistics that were published by the Federal States Statistics Center and Analytical Center under the government of Russian Federation. So here you can see the trend of uh, construction GDP from the period 2014 to 2020. So we can see that GDP is rising from the period 2014 to 2019. Unfortunately, because of pandemia, we have a decrease section. So, but the trend is to rising. To understand the business of construction, we of course need to understand the main features. So the first one and very important one is seasonality. The most work uh, do by construction companies for the period from April to November. So also construction business can have a big number of external supplies uh, and uh, construction companies need to be flexible and to react to changes in requirements from customers. So also we need to understand that construction is about projects. Uh, let us discuss organizational structures. So how to choose it? We need to consider the main points. So we need to analyze company size, territorial distribution, variety of products, does company have one product or multiple product companies? So dynamic of external environment. Also, we need to analyze the patient to sector condition and competitive level of every sector. So today we will discuss a network organizational structure. So here we can see an example. Um, we need to understand that network organizational structure is about flexibility. So we have a core is a company. In a core, we have an internal organizational structure of concrete company. Also, we can see that company communicate with a lot of external providers. So we see that it's about flexibility as well as it's about communication and strong relationships. As well, it has its pros and cons about pros company when use network structure they can react fastly for market changes also they can control their costs and they have an ability to attract highly uh, qualified specialists or uh, about disadvantages of course because of a big number of external providers there is a risk of information loss so transformation process and a new supply piece so we need to recognize structure and sometimes the process of finding performance become difficult. So during this research we have um, communicated with concrete company that work in Nizhny Novgorod, that is a city in Russia, and it called Atlet Storing In. So they have a typical uh, processes for uh, construction company. Here we can see the current uh, organizational structure. So they have two directors, supplier, foreman, designer, technical supervision, and accountant, and some PJ. What about how it connects with processes? So please note that yellow uh, color is about internal providers, so it's organization. And uh, blue one is about external providers. Here we can see that Almost all uh, main processes are done by internal providers, so by company itself. And the most part of construction team is external providers. So uh, let's analyze this company with points. Uh, so it is a small local company and they are concentrated on private buildings. And also we need to notice that competitive level and dynamic of external environment is high. Uh, according to these points, we suppose that it is better to use uh, network structure. So what's changed? We see a core. So here two directors, designer, supply and accountant. They, we need to state these roles because we need their work for a whole year. Uh, technical supervision and construction team are fully transferred to external providers. Also need to notice that we have a new one 
provider, law firm, it is very important because when we have a lot of providers, we have a lot of communication and relationships. So we need to contract all our relationships in a proper way. So here we can see roles and processes again, but changes. Uh, we can see that construction team and technical supervision, uh, supervision team are fully passed to external providers. Also, process of advertising are fully go to advertising company and new process appears. So we need to prepare uh, a contract to work with external providers and here the new provider law firm he connect with director of development. Also, we need to understand what, how our changes will affect on our cost. Here we can see the main cost. So it is information search cost, opportunity behavior, management, negotiation and contracting and decision-making cost. What about information search cost? So now our company needs search for performance, for materials and now, uh, development director do a process of advertising, so they spend time and money uh, for trainings on marketing and advertising topic. When we will use a network structure, we will need to search for performance, material, lawyer, marketer, and technical supervision team. Also, we understand that uh, when number of providers are increased, so we will need to prepare contracts and number of communication will be increased. That's the first point why we need a lawyer. Uh, what about our period opportunistic behavior cost? So we need to understand that this kind of cost can be appeared in every company with every uh, organization type. So to solve this problem, we also need to make detailed contracts with clear requirements. So that is one point to also to have a lower measurement costs. Now it appears when technical supervision team works. So when, um, so now we suppose to transfer these um, processes fully to external providers. So to sum up, during this work, we have learned uh, construction business. We analyze a company and we suggest uh, to use a network structure and what change. So technical supervision and construction team are fully transferred to external providers and advertising processes are also fully provided to external new provider and they need a new provide a law firm and it will uh, connect with development director. And so we have a number of roles, supplier, design, accountant and directors uh, instead because they need their work in a whole year. So thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Nadezhda, for presentation. And now it's time for the questions. Uh, you'll start a question session with the following question. Uh, Nadezhda, please tell me, uh, do you have some measurable criteria to evaluate effectiveness of the changes proposed in your work? So I had compared how costs like salaries uh, will change. So let me. Uh, for example, um, in a case we will provide um, work to external providers like construction team and technical supervision team to uh, external environments. So we will haven't um, need to pay salaries to them, but we will have a one-time salaries for law firm or marketing firm, but
I lost a signal. Nadezhda, I don't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now it's okay. Please repeat your last sentence. Uh, so, uh, about measurable, we need to check costs of companies. So, uh, for example, we will lose salaries for technical supervision and construction team, uh, constant salary. But we will have uh, one-time salaries for law firm and marketing firm. I cannot provide detailed number because of security. Uh, any other questions from our attendees? Well, uh, let's discuss not just uh, that aspect of uh, measurable criteria in more detail. Uh, you know, uh, I'm little bit unaware that uh, simple uh, cost uh, effectiveness uh, can be applied for re-engineering of companies uh, in the agile world. Uh, why? Because uh, if we re-engineer structure, we need to be sure that a new structure uh, will be flexible enough to change uh, when uh, the environmental conditions, when uh, market situation will also be changed. And if we reduce the cost in uh, re-engineering process, we reduce uh, complexity, internal complexity of a company, and then we reduce chances to be modified. We reduce ch uh, chances uh, to uh, mimic the environment. And that means that in a uh, medium perspective, such company uh, can lose their advantages. Yes, they will spend less money to maintain a uh, re-engineered structure, but at the same time, that company uh, will be not able to restructure uh, in a short time, reflecting the changes in the environment. The company will not be an agile entity. Uh, what do you think about these studies and what can you propose as additional uh, criteria to evaluate the results of uh, re-engineering process? Um, so, okay, um, about this type of uh, company organization opposite, it is about flexibility. So, when we need to reorganize, when we need a new role, uh, mostly we will find it by external uh, but, uh, in external providers. So in case of this company, it is really small company with uh, processes, uh, simple processes. So uh, uh, in a case they will need uh, some new, for example, logistic firm or uh, construction team uh, they will find a new one. So, how to advertise this? I need to think. Mm. Let me dive uh, into more detail. Uh, please tell us, from your perspective, uh, what is the main driver of cost reduction in your case? Did you hear my question? Ah, uh, yes, I did. Um, can you reformulate it, it, please? Is it clear?
You mean how costs will be depends on changes? Yes. Uh, why? Uh, after uh, re-engineering, mm -hmm. the cost uh, will be lower. So, firstly, we need to understand that first time it will be increased when we will uh, have a need to find new providers. But later, when we will have a strong communication and a strong relationships, when we will do all contracts with law firm and have, for example, advertising company, some providers will go out. So we will, uh, uh, so we will have a strong communication with other providers, and company will work without, for example. Um, Cost for information search for providers for some time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe other people have some remarks, comments, or questions today. Participants are very high, unusually. Uh, yesterday we had rather interesting and collective discussion. Well, uh, as a chair of this session, I need to ask at least one question to you, Nadezhda. Sorry, we have one-to-one -one <laughs> communication uh, today. Well, my next question uh, is related with our main topic of uh, agility and incremental uh, delivery of uh, value for the customer. In your case, uh, do you see such uh, incremental uh, changes in uh, organizational structure? Can you build a roadmap to step-by-step -step changes in current structure of processes, responsibilities, and communications between different uh, organizational bodies. Did you hear my question? Yeah, I need time to formulate the answer. Okay. Uh, so how uh, do I understand correctly that you asked how company uh, will change step by step? Mm -hmm. Because uh, each agile mm -hmm. enterprise wish to deliver the product by small chunks. And in your case, each chunk is a small modification of organizational structure or communication patterns between different stakeholders. Maybe your co-authors will be able to assist you in that question. Professor Malajankov, are you here? Not at all. Yes. I think he is here, but is attendee. Uh, okay, so you need to get the answer alone. So I will repeat question. Uh, how can you define a roadmap for step-by-step -step, uh, process transformation in your particular case? Here I am, dear colleagues. Hello. Okay, you you should unmute it now, Professor Malajenkov, so you can. Yes, I'm down. here. Hello. Hello. Do you do you uh, know the current question? 
which, which I hope so. So uh, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, so the question regards um, a roadmap to, um, let's say, the algorithm of such sort of reengineering process. Exactly. What do you think about that issue? Did I understand it right? Well, yes, to my mind, uh, um, and uh, actually this is the sense of uh, entire paper that that Nadezhda has presented now. So it all starts with the analysis of transaction costs, right? And from this point of view, this work is, uh, uh, represents a very good contribution because it is based on a solid theoretical, uh, let's say theoretical basis, which is the theory of transaction costs. On the basis of which analysis, the enterprise can choose the most suitable, the most Mm, how to say the most right, the most right organizational structure. So the, the roadmap is first analyze the transaction costs, then uh, do the conclusion, make a conclusion about the most suitable organization form, which in this case is network organization, which is most suitable due to all the particularities of construction sector to this sector. Right? After that, uh, design the classical scheme, as is the classical scheme to be, understand the differences and uh, to uh, elaborate the, immigra the immigration plan from one state to another state. If all this is supported with the, uh, is supported by, uh, let's say, uh, suitable, um, suitable uh, calculation of economic effect, it's much better. Well, thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, I need to say that you uh, nicely presented the roadmap of the research itself. But initial question was uh, about a roadmap for step-by-step uh, -step implementation of changes in organizational structure. It is the final uh, part of the research. Because we are talking about uh, agility, about incremental delivery of value, uh, it would be nice to discuss opportunity to deliver the results of uh, re-engineering uh, research by a similar manner, by a step-by-step -step transformation when each transformation change only a small part of uh, organizational structure uh, each activity change only a small part of uh, communication patterns uh, inside the organization. Yes, if so, I got your uh, question right, yes, from this point of view, what can save us, let's say so, is a good uh, reference model, exactly created exactly for the construction sector, which naturally could, could be created after, not only, not after the analysis of only one case, but after such. Uh, some series of such cases, which will result in a, in a good reference model suitable for any uh, enterprise operating in, in the construction sector. Because ah, uh, okay, please the, agility, the concept of agility here is very, very, uh, let's say, is applicable because the network organization is by definition agile. It is flexible. It can extend according to the needs of the sector or according to the con contingent business situation, and it can contract. So that's the real advantage of network organization. And as Nadezhda proved and demonstrated in her work, uh, it, for exactly for construction sector, especially for construction sector, it is the most suitable organization decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I correctly interpreted your answer, uh, it means that to create such step-by-step uh, -step, uh, re-engineering uh, process, we need to combine different use cases in similar industries. And only after such combination, we can deduce some generic principle and uh, can discover some invariance and can propose 
really reusable methodology for agile reengineering. Am I right? Yes, in, uh, yes. In this case, well, I think that uh, the basis for such the base for such a reference mo model have uh, have already been created for uh, 70-80 percent. Uh, let's say some new use case uh, is needed only for definition of different details that for sure uh, are present in this um, in this sector, but. Uh, Let's say mostly the base for such a reference model has been created, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the last uh, question, both to Professor Maloshenkov and uh, Nadezhda. Uh, what do you think about uh, feasible support from uh, information technology side? What uh, information system should do in order to to facilitate such kind of studies or such kind of uh, agile uh, reengineering, maybe in this particular domain of uh, civil construction work. Uh, so, ask, yes, um, do I understand correctly that how IT should support this organization structure? Mm -hmm. So, last year I had learned also about a uh, company in construction business, and so now it is, uh, we have a BIM technology, so BIM technology, it is building information management, as I remember, and so this is um, a big topic, so I'll uh, say some words. This is a system that um, apply companies to work also in flexible ways. So in um, using this system, company can work as internal. So also external providers can use this system and the whole um, information about current and released projects are existed in the system. So it is really big system with uh, different opportunities and also this system um, apply to be integrated in companies because uh, it can be integrated with such uh, apps as AutoCAD, as you know. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, technologies for, to support this company organization type. Okay, thank you. It's clear now. Uh, maybe there are some questions from uh, our participants. I recognize that now uh, you are permitted to talk in this Zoom session, so everybody can raise a hand and ask question in chat or by microphone. Any other questions or concerns? Okay, thank you very much, Nadezhda. Thank you, Professor Maloshenko, for, for such a fruitful discussion. And now thank we you. can proceed further and I invite the uh, author of the next article, which is entitled, uh, just a moment, I need to see my notes. Yes, the article is entitled, A New Approach to the Social Dimension of IT Business Alignment. Okay, and uh, I expect uh, this topic will be presented by Mr. Chlebnikov, Roman Chlebnikov. Yeah, Roman, so I see thank you your very presentation much. and uh, listen to your voice, so please go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm really glad to present you our paper, 
which name is any approach to the social dimension of IT business element. Uh, okay, uh, the main aim of this work is to formulate and research a new hypothesis uh, that the terms which are found in professional artifacts uh, of IT and business are expression of the social aspect of alignment. Uh, in this slide, you can see work structure. Uh, in chapter in, in, in the second chapter, uh, we summarized uh, the literature analysis of, of this topic. In third chapter, uh, the, the hypothesis is formulated and the main points of the conceptual model are presented by using classifiers and professional standards. And fourth chapter uh, present you the main findings and direction for future research. Uh, the problem of IT business al aligning is increasingly emerging among business challenges. New, te new technologies, artificial intelligence, Bitcoin, big data, uh, just contribute to the growth of this problem. The business needs to understand much faster why they need this or exactly this technology. And IT departments have to deliver uh, that technology as soon as possible. Uh, an important aspect of development and IT strategy is the need to achieve a high level of alignment uh, of IT capabilities with the, need, with the needs and expectations of the business. Uh, the existing library of symptoms of IT business uh, misalignment is widely discussed in the literature. However, most of the ideas are based on metric based on uh, intelligent aspect of alignment, but the social aspects are difficult to overestimate. Uh, if we have a well-structured and formally defined uh, approach, it's easy to align the organization. Uh, in other words, uh, social dimension of IT business alignment, well, we can define as uh, the level of mutual understanding of, of commitment to the business uh, and IT mission. Uh, in, in one of the most important research, uh, the authors uh, suggest two sources of assessing uh, the level of social level of alignment between IT and business. Uh, the first is uh, understanding and thoughts of managers about contribution of IT and business. The, se the second one is uh, business and IT documents or artifacts. Uh, now we see a problem. Uh, the prevailing approach in the literature to assess social alignment. It means the, in the literature we have uh, only first uh, approach and uh, uh, Okay, uh, according to John Milopoulos, mm, uh, okay, we need to uh, explain some s some terms which uh, uh, which are help which are helping you to understand the the main hypothesis. hypothesis. Uh, according to John Milopoulos, conceptual modeling is an activity I am describing aspects of physical and social world for understanding and communication. The author also points out that conceptual schemes and uh, uh, are a description, a reflection of aspects that can be used to find the points of agreement between members of a particular group uh, in order to understand, for example, the business world in the same way. Conceptual uh, schemes require the adoption of formal, uh, they can be professional standards classified by industry, uh, documentation, uh, that can reflect the employee's labor function. Uh, now we see uh, some figure which um, which define the hypothesis. Um, according to the to the definition of conceptual modeling and analysis of the literature on the social aspect of this uh, alignment, we can we can create hypothesis. Uh, it is possible to determine the degree 
of social IT business alignment by searching for overlapping terms and business and IT artifacts. Uh, in other words, uh, to in order to determine the level of social aspect of alignment, it's necessary to highlight the main profession and IT uh, and business. Uh, and we can assume that each profession represents a small fraction of, of the areas which we explore. So we can determine the boundaries of particular type of activity by fixing the profession. Mm. So uh, therefore the purpose of the section is comparative analysis uh, is comparative analysis of the areas business uh, and IT by highlighting key terms, as well as searching for the terms IT and business in the description of the profession. If these terms are observable uh, in certain profession, then we can say uh, that social alignment reached the right level. Um, several sources were selected for analysis, both Russian and international. That uh, the term analysis was showed that um, for purposes of professional standards, there are really terms that reflect the participation of IT spe specialists in the formation of business strategy. Uh, however, uh, among the professional standards, send out software architect, system analysis, uh, information resource specialist, uh, among whose terms there are both IT and business terms. The conclusion uh, is uh, that follows, this is the objective of these activities are aimed at aligning IT and business. Uh, now, uh, I will speak about uh, the first bank in Russia, Sberbank. Sberbank uh, ranks first among all banks uh, in the Russian Federation in terms of assets for 2021. Uh, this uh, means that uh, it's the most popular bank in the Russian Federation. Uh, uh, in uh, in 2017, Sberbank presented the strategy for digital transformation by 2020, uh, which consisted of building an ecosystem. Uh, in order to, to be consistent with the digitalization and ecosystem building strategy, uh, stakeholders should understand their role in overall strategy. Each step of uh, the process must be IT supported. It's necessary to test the hypothesis that the old uh, the oldest business process is consist with IT plans. Um, at each stage, uh, work of people rep representing certain stage of the process is possible. Uh, without the participation, digital transformation of business process is impossible. Uh, this should be. A conditional interface between IT and business, uh, which uh, has terms that are uh, understandable to each of the stakeholders. Uh, to test uh, the hypothesis, uh, it's necessary to highlight the corresponding profession and the job function. Uh, the primary analysis showed that uh, this stage of business process uh, serve professions among whose work function uh, more than 25% considerance match uh, in terms, but for, success, for successful digital transformation, it's uh, imperative that people can communicate without problems. Uh, we carried out uh, a primary analysis of documents related to professional using job function and the goal uh, of profession. Some of the work function uh, had much in terms. Uh, this suggests that a degree of alignment between profession is quite high in so, at certain stages of the business process. The hypothesis and the initial analysis provide a direction for future research. Uh, the terms are where uh, expression of IT business alignment that can be represented as, uh, again, interfaces. To summarize the approach, uh, can be used as a primary analysis of the labor documents. Uh, this analysis will allow at 
at the stage of document, uh, the document development to reduce the time uh, for future alignment of IT and business. Um, the use of big data analysis tools for future research will allow an analyzing historical text data of IT business artifacts and assessing the metrics of social aspect of IT business alignment. Uh, it, it will be percentage of terms match uh, where over target variable will be a binary value. Uh, binary value. For example, uh, uh, one, it will be uh, the company has had success, uh, uh, zero, uh, the company didn't have success. Okay, thank you. Any question? Well, Roman, thank you very much for your presentation. And now time for the questions. Dear participants, please feel free to ask questions or raise concerns. Uh, come on, uh, I have a question to you. It becomes traditional <laughs> couple of questions during our session. Uh, do you have in mind some uh, criteria to measure the misalignment of uh, business and IT when we follow your approach? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, yes. Uh, the the simplest way is uh, just uh, find some matches uh, between terms and uh, how many percent of these matches, uh, and this is uh, this will be a criteria. Uh, but uh, as I said about big data. Uh, of course, uh, the criteria will be, uh, um, for example, uh, it will be metrics uh, which are, which present uh, the um, the mistakes uh, in uh, in our analysis. I mean, um, for example, uh, if uh, some company uh, had success and uh, our algorithm said that it was success, it's okay. But uh, if uh, he had mistake, it was, uh, it was, it was one metric. I think that's okay. Right. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Yes, there is. One question, at least one. Yes, Joseph, you can ask a question uh, as far as I understood uh, you are talking permitted. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, great presentation, Roman, but to my unfortunate, uh, I somehow joined a, a different session, <laughs> so I did not follow your presentation from the start, but I remember your paper from uh, reading it. Uh, so I literally uh, joined when you were in the last uh, two slides, <laughs> just before the conclusion. So you talk about uh, transformation and a major bang, uh, and you talked about uh, processes, business processes, but the schema that I saw and you were process presentation, it seems like a very high level processes. It uh, almost seemed to me like a value stream, like a very high level processes. And then you also talk about digital uh, transformation. Uh, I assume that when you talk about digital transformation, you uh, mainly look from a process orientation, like process-driven digital transformation, like you capture first processes and then you look how 
uh, these processes can be uh, digitalized, how digitally we can transform an organization. So my question would be, uh, what is the granularity of the processes? At what level you are looking at the processes? Are these big value stream steps? Are they enter processes? Are they dat data level? What is that level of granularity that you would consider best fit for digital transformation? Again, my apologies if the question is not well aligned with your paper because I am uh, relying on my memory of reading your paper. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It's a really good question. Um, our idea was that uh, we don't actually care about the process. We, we need to find some stage of the process uh, where uh, some, prof some profession in um, IT and business uh, somehow um, work together and uh, th this um, actually my process is just for uh, looking for some stage and uh, this simply way help us to not uh, spread our ideas on really uh, really hard and really uh, I mean, complicated process. It it was just uh, for uh, for searching some um, some little moment in in this. That's all. Uh, I hope okay. you understand me. Okay. So basically, uh, it was a collaboration of the IT business and the aim was for looking for uh, what opportunities could be uh, could be found uh, for uh, whether it's a transformation whether it's for improvement or whether it's for any uh, transformational intervention um, can you talk a little bit about how this collaboration or teamwork between the two sides, IT and business side, uh, was taken place? Um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you have time, uh, just very little briefly. Thank you. Uh, can you repeat a uh, form of question? Uh, you mean uh, how IT and the business profession are collaborated in this stage? Right. What I was trying to say is that uh, any um, uh, digital transformation uh, or any IT, uh, IT improvement or implementation would uh, require a close collaboration between a technical solution and also the end users. Otherwise said, between IT and business people. Because business people, they know and they own the operations and IT are supporting those operations through um, digital support through uh, application development. Uh, uh, any, any insight on that uh, collaboration uh, aspect? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, it will be uh, uh, interface between IT and uh, business. For example, uh, uh, what is digitalization? Uh, for my process, uh, if I can, uh, for my process, for example, on application, uh, we have two sides, uh, credit manager and database administrator. Uh, for loan application, uh, you need uh, to, uh, to do some form in, in mobile app, mobile app, and uh, in this stage, credit manager and database administ administrator uh, work together. And uh, for this, uh, you need to create some uh, interface uh, with terms, uh, which, are, uh, which are understandable 
in business uh, world and IT world. And, uh, and then we can speak about uh, social, uh, social aspect of alignment of IT in business. Thank you very much, Roman. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph, for the question. Mm. Any other questions? Uh, because we have some amount of time, I, I cannot resist the temptation to ask a traditional mob question to Roman. That question, as you can imagine, is related with uh, agility. Uh, if you apply uh, your approach, uh, can you define a number of steps for removing misalignment? The first step, you remove one misalignment, and the second stage, you remove the second misalignment, and so on and so on. Uh, do you okay. have some ideas how to practically implement such an incremental approach for reducing misalignment? Okay, I try. Um, first step uh, will be find a real problem in business. Uh, the second step will be um, uh find uh find two kind of profession i mean i t in business and uh, uh highlight some um, real problem in in communication between them and uh the th the third step uh would be um, analyze the uh, programs or some interfaces or uh, document documentation uh, which uh, are used by uh, the profession. And uh, the fifth step uh, would be, uh, I think it, it, it it, it will be simple, but uh, it it won't be simple. But uh, I think we could create some uh, uh, some mega interface. I mean, uh, which uh, consists of really uh, understandable terms. Mm -hmm. Of course, if I understand right yeah. the question. Yes, but maybe you could uh, give me a more detailed answer as we will take into account uh, some measurable uh, criteria. For example, a number of uh, mismatched words in some particular fragment of uh, interface. If you can discover such uh, discrepancies, uh, mismatch in different terms and in different words, uh, can you uh, find the most critical part of your interfaces and simultaneously the most critical parts of the processes which are not aligned in terms of business and IT? Mm -hmm. Actually, yes, it, it, it is a, it is answer, I think. Yes, it's we just, need it. uh, just, yes, uh, maybe an answer or maybe a suggestion for further research uh, in your topic. Yeah, of course. Because for me, it seems to be reasonable to apply semantic uh, measures and uh, linguistic uh, frameworks to discover the most important problem. And the most important problems are the problems where we can find the greatest number of mismatches between the terms of IT and terms of business. So, you have a good roadmap <laughs> of your research in that case. Yeah. 
Very well. Uh, so, any other questions? Maybe somebody has some concluding remarks for our session because it was the final talk today and final talk of the mobile workshop. If not, I need to say many thanks uh, to our presenters. I need to say many thanks uh, to our organizer. Thank you very much, Aika, for managing this session. And I need to uh, say that uh, I invite everybody to our final closing session at the end of the workshop, where we can try to discuss uh, some relevant uh, questions in the domain of uh, model-driven organizational and business agility. Maybe during this session we will be able to determine uh, jointly interesting projects or pathways for collaborative research. Anybody will be able to express their opinion, uh, suggest some research topics and uh, uh, communicate with the colleagues. Mm, please visit our uh, website uh, for detailed information about uh, time of that final session and uh, in order to get the link for the Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, now I can close the session. Goodbye and uh, see you today later on in our final round table. Edward, I just, I just wanted very quickly to say that uh, Sahel, who presented yesterday the keynotes uh, presentation, uh, he will be also joining for the closing panel and he was uh, very impressed by the sessions yesterday and interactions. He said, I will join the closing panel and uh, I must say that uh, with his uh, participation, uh, the good thing is that uh, the audience will also hear uh, some uh, insights, very valuable insights from how in reality, how in companies uh, we are uh, applying agile approaches, like how these IT applications, how information systems and complex softwares are developed in a real uh, settings in companies. So I just wanted to uh, make uh, colleagues aware that at uh, 4 p.m. when you come back, uh, you will have a participant and he been working with many uh, Fortune 500 companies here in the United States. I think that would be very interesting to see his more practical insight and also have questions. Uh, uh, he's also very big on how to develop career in the field of agility, and also what is the educational aspect, the research trends, etc. Just wanted to bring this to the attention of everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joseph, for such important remarks. I will be very glad that he will join us because I was very impressed yesterday by his speech. And uh, let's see what the other participants do and suggest uh, during our final talk. Okay. So, goodbye and see you later on. Thank you.